Ah, what is up, people? So, um, so we're here in studio, and, um, this video is just going to consist of a little bit of introduction on how to actually, uh, you know, code, you know, actually do things. Uh, so today we're going to cover a little bit on, uh, you know, the basics, just basically, literally, the first thing a code says to you when you open it in Roblox Studio is, hello world. Now, a lot of people probably are going to open a code and be like, what the f- So, um, uh, I'm just going to, uh, decode that decode that for you guys and uh, we're just gonna you know actually look into what this means and uh, how we use it in uh, you know coding so uh, yeah let's do it okay so now that my mic is actually on on and I can actually uh, do my lesson um, I'd say <coughs> you're uh, your name's mini too and uh, you're, gonna, you're gonna create one of Roblox's best games ever um, so you open a code in studio, you open your first script, and you're like, oh yeah, and then you're like, oh no, because you don't know what print hello, uh, print hello world means. Um, so let's talk about that. What does print hello mean? Print, and then whatever is in parentheses, and, uh, and, um, I forgot what these are called, but whatever. Whenever something is formatted like this. Um, this is gonna go directly to the output. So, uh, it says print hello world. So let's just run the game and, uh, you'll see what I mean. So as you can see right here, it printed hello world, just like the code said it would print into the output like that. By the way, if you don't know how to open the output, all you gotta do is head on over to the top of the screen and click on view and then just hit output and it'll pop up right here. Easy as that. So let's say you're Mr. Fancy Coder Man, and um, you're gonna start going. Uh, you're gonna start adding more to this. Um, so let's say, uh, for argument's sake. So for argument's sake, let's say you want to add mathematics to this because you're a weirdo. Um, so what you're gonna want to type in is local uh, to store some values. So the word local uh, in coding means that uh, it's like the word that you use to. Uh, store any data of something so like let's say uh you you can you can call the the, the the you can call the data anything you want like you can call it this um now if you call it that you're not gonna have a good time while you're coding but uh you do you i guess so um let's say you're a sensible person and uh, you call it local uh let's say you call it local killer guy so you're gonna call it local killer guy or whatever you want equals uh 10. Now the letter or the number ten is stored in uh, the word killer guy whenever you use it on your code. Uh, so let's go down and type in another one. Let's do local uh, killer and just killer equals uh, five. Now there's a five stored in the word killer. Uh, now make sure you don't start these with a number because if you do, it will confuse the code. So just make sure you don't start you don't put a, like a number at the start of the names, and you're good to go. So let's just go down to and let's type in print. Uh, to address to the output that you're gonna, you know, send something there, and you're gonna type in parentheses, and to do that you're gonna hit shift and nine, uh, and since we're using, uh, you know, values that are like variables that uh, have stored data, we're not gonna type in these quotations, all right? So you're gonna wanna type just the parentheses, and then you're gonna wanna type in killer guy, or whatever you have stored for ten, or whatever you stored in it, whatever number, doesn't matter, plus uh, five. Or, uh, not five, killer, plus killer. And, uh, yeah, that's it. And if you open the game, uh, you're gonna get 15, because, uh, 10 plus five is 15. Uh, I hope you would know that without having to, uh, ask the output. And if you did, you could've just opened a calculator. So, um, let's spice it up. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm gonna show you about, uh, touched functions. So, uh, let's get rid of this code. And, uh, let's insert a part into the workspace. There you go, a part. Uh, make sure you anchor it, uh, if you want, doesn't really matter. And we're gonna put a script inside of that part. So, there you go, there's your script. And, uh, you're gonna wanna type in... Uh, you're gonna wanna type in script. Because uh, we are referring, whenever you type in script in a code, that is referring to like the actual script, like the script you're typing this in. So yeah, 
and then dot, uh, because now we're going to talk about something else. So script dot parent, because uh, if you look on the right side over here on the Explorer, there's a script, and inside it, or um, above the script is a part. That part is the parent of the script. You can find that in the, you can see that in the properties of the script, that the parent is this part. Um, so yeah, it's really easy uh, to remember if you just look at this or if you just think about that. So script dot parent dot touched. So touched will mean that like the player in the game touched it, the part, because the part is the parent. And then you're gonna wanna type in connect. Uh, and instead of using a dot, you're gonna wanna type in a colon. Uh, and then you're gonna want to type in a parentheses and then type in and then you're gonna type in uh, another parentheses and get rid of this last one and it's gonna look like this script.parent.touched uh, colon per, uh, connect uh, function so basically all this is saying is the scripts parent was touched so it's gonna start a function so you're gonna to wanna to hit enter and this end will appear. Uh, so you're just gonna type in between uh, the function and the end. And you're gonna type in print parentheses. Uh, and then whatever you wanna type in it. So uh, yeah, there you go. So uh, let's try that out in view and let's see, let's see if it works. And there you go, it works. See, and it's going up in value whenever you touch it. Now, as you can see, it's going up in value a lot. Like, I'm literally only hitting it once and it's going up by like 100 billion. So let me show you how to fix that. So now we're gonna learn about something called debounce. Debounce uh, refers, uh, debounce will make it so that <clears throat> whenever you do something in the code, it'll only happen once <clears throat> and only once uh, until uh, the code recognize it that it can do it again. Uh, so in order to do that, you're gonna wanna, let's just delete this for reference. You're gonna wanna type in local deb, D-E-B, uh, and you're, you're gonna store some values in there. You're gonna store something in there. You're gonna wanna hit space, uh, hit space equals false. Local deb equals false. So now we're gonna go back down by two and we're gonna type in script.parent.touched connect function. And then, there you go, we're here now. Now, all you're gonna wanna type is if deb equals equals false. So this is telling the script to check if deb equals false, if it's true that deb equals false. If it does, which it does, deb equals true. That's how you set up a debound script. So now you're gonna wanna type in whatever you were gonna type in your code. So like print uh, 69. Um, you're gonna wanna type in print and then whatever you want and then just hit enter again and then hit wait. Uh, and then however long you want it to wait until the script can do what it needs to do again. Uh, and then you're just gonna wanna type in deb equals false and there you go that's really it so uh we're gonna test this real quick and then i'm going to translate that for you so uh let's uh hit the little brick and as you can see it only did it once let's keep hitting it and it's see it's only doing it once instead of how it was doing it before it's only going up every one second because we keep touching it the only reason it's going up once every second is because we made it so that it waits one second. So yeah, that's uh, really all there is to it. And it's not too bad, it's not too hard. Uh, if you don't want it to, if you want it to like just, if you want it to do it once and only once ever, you could even type in uh, wait one if you want for the script to have a moment. And then type in script.disabled equals true. This is referring to the script itself, 
in here and all it's doing is grabbing its behavior and setting it to disabled uh, equals true. That's really it. And uh, now it'll only do it once. And uh, yeah, that's it. Take a look. You can see in the properties, let me open up the script and it'll only do it once. Take a look. And now the script is disabled. As you can see, it changed colors, which means it disabled. And uh, yeah. So that's really all I have to go off of uh, for this video. It's not too hard. I mean, I showed you how touched scripts work. Like we can, I can talk about them again later because they're really helpful. They're how I make most of my games. Um, but uh, yeah, that's really all I had for this one. And uh, I hope you, you liked it. And uh, I'll uh, try and go again for another video soon. And uh, yeah. Uh, please subscribe uh, if you're new please I really want to grow this channel and uh, yeah thanks uh, see y'all